I think we're still understanding um, SPMs and, and poor resolving mediators in general in the aging process. Um, but there was uh, initial work from the Surhan group, from uh, Charles Surhan's group, that demonstrated that um, in aged animals, there was a delayed resolution response, a delayed temporal resolution response, and that when his lab members added back resolvents, they could correct that uh, delay in resolution. Uh, mechanisms associated with why that's occurring and um, you know um, how resolvents actually act to uh, promote resolution in aging are an area of uh, intense investigation by myself and many others. So I, I should also mention that you know some work from our lab um, in addition to uh, work from several other labs showed that um, a process associated with aging and resolution called ephrocytosis, which is the ability of macrophages to clear dead cells is, is very readily defective in aging. So that results in poor tissue repair and all sorts of other issues. And we found uh, a mechanism as to why that might be uh, defective in aging. Um, and um, we could restore that with SPMs like RVD1. You know, the, the research still needs to be done, um, for sure, but there is a lot of evidence in the, in the literature about ongoing or persistent um, inflammation in aging. And um, because we know SPMs can control the inflammatory response, it would be uh, feasible to think and rational to think that um, SPMs would be very helpful in aging to at least quell that low-grade persistent inflammation. So there are several, so the resolution response or inflammation resolution response is highly coordinated. It is um, regulated by specialized per resolving mediators like resolvins, lipoxins, protectins, marisins. There's also proteins like annexin A1 and a protein called DEL1. There's gases, there's nucleotides, and we're even learning about metabolites. So there's a lot we can learn about and uh, about the, the resolution of inflammation and endogenous factors. Uh, my lab in particular, in particular studies the specialized pro-resolving mediators, but it is an entire field open to numerous endogenous, fac endogenous factors that play a role in the response. This is probably one of the biggest questions we have uh, in the field. You know, why, why are these mechanisms dysregulated? Um, there's a, a lot of possibilities and a lot of ongoing research. Um, so in some cases, just from the, from the example of specialized pro-resolving mediators, in some diseases like atherosclerosis, there's a large imbalance in the uh, SPMs or the pro-resolving ligands to the pro-inflammatory ligands like leukotrienes. Um, so there could be an imbalance or a biosynthesis defect. Um, some other you know, possibilities is that there might be SNPs in some of the receptors or some issues in the receptors that um, SPMs bind to or any other pro-resolving ligand binds to. So again, it's a, it's a very ripe area of, of exciting research that we have a lot to uh, learn about. The work that, that my lab is working on and that I started with Ira Tabas at Columbia University um, was understanding um, or trying to identify a biochemical signature associated with an advanced plaque or in humans a more vulnerable plaque. And we identified along with Matt Spite um, at the Brigham that there was this market imbalance between SPMs and leukotrienes, so the pro-resolving versus the pro-inflammatory. And we uh, uncovered one potential mechanism of what I am sure are many, many mechanisms, um, and that uh, we think has something to do with potentially subcellular localization of biosynthetic enzymes. Um, it could also have something to do with the types of cells that are in the plaques at the certain time, um, whether a cell type is in a vulnerable plaque versus a more stable plaque. Um, so we're, we're working on mechanisms, but we think it has something to do with, um, um, you know, uh, the biosynthesis arm of the SPMs. We don't understand why um, they're defective completely, but, but it's an active area of research. All of the receptors for the SPMs are expressed in atherosclerotic plaques and sometimes even elevated in atherosclerotic plaques. And um, Magnus Back in Sweden uh, has done 
a tremendous amount in that arena uh, with regard to understanding SPM receptors. So we, we think there's there might be a, biosynth a biosynthesis uh, impairment. So in three to five years, you know, at least for my team, I hope that we can identify a more more of a mechanistic understanding of why SPMs um, aren't, um, you know, acting as well as they could or being biosynthesized as well as they could in atherosclerosis and in aging. You know, also to understand a little bit more of a mechanistic insight into how certain SPMs promote repair uh, within atherosclerotic plaques or potentially help in uh, mitigating that ongoing inflammation and aging. So a lot of the um, initial findings with the SPMLT imbalance were actually in human atherosclerotic plaques or human plasma uh, from um, uh, patients with atherosclerosis. Um, the timeline to potential therapy is completely unknown. Um, that depends on a lot of factors. Um, but I think having a better mechanistic understanding of how resolvins act when you um, you know, add them exogenously would be very helpful to provide confidence about whether they are, you know, a, a better understanding of SPMs uh, when added exogenously uh, would provide confidence for, you know, how to, how to target. So for example, do SPMs act on specific cell types? Do they act on all the cell types? Where do they act? Um, and if we know a little bit more details, then maybe we can even think about targeting therapy uh, a little bit better and thinking about more of a personalized based medicine in that regard. Mm -hmm.